Hi everybody, welcome back. This is Unit 3, Lesson 2, and we're going to talk about the four different radioactive particles. So they're all listed here in Table O, which you have a copy of in your reference tables, because I believe the copy in your notes is not very clear. But the four particles are an alpha particle, and we give the alpha particle the symbol HE42, um, a beta particle, which has the symbol E0, negative 1. A beta particle is simply a high-speed electron. There's a positron, which is E0 plus 1. And then there's a gamma ray, which is a wave of energy. It's massless <coughs> and chargeless type of radiation. God bless you. Thank you. So alpha decay is the release of an alpha particle from the nucleus. And an alpha particle is really just the nucleus of a helium atom. It's the same. It's not the whole helium atom because it doesn't contain electrons. It's just the nucleus of a helium atom. Okay, so really if we look at the notation for an alpha particle, the atomic number is the number of protons. It's made of two protons. And you get the number of neutrons by subtracting. So it's also two neutrons. So alpha decay is when an unstable nucleus releases two protons and two neutrons. Usually heavier elements undergo alpha decay, like polonium-210. So if you have polonium-210, uh, its atomic number is 84, I think. Yeah, 84. It will spit out, it's unstable, it will spit out alpha particles. And when it does, it turns into someone new, it transmutates. And what you have to know is what the mass of that new particle would be and the atomic number. Well, think about it. If you just lost two protons, then your atomic number will be two less, right? So this guy's atomic number is going to be 82, and in fact it will be lead. And if you lost uh, two protons and two neutrons, each with a mass of one, the total is four, the mass will go down by four. So this would be 206, 82 lead. So the polonium transmutates into lead through the release of alpha radiation. When a particle undergoes its alpha decay, the mass decreases by four, and the atomic number decreases by two. Beta decay is very similar to alpha decay, except it's the release of an electron or a beta particle from an unstable nucleus. If you know anything about the last chapter, what you should be doing is scratching your head right now because I thought electrons were found outside the nucleus, not inside the nucleus. So how in this radiation is the beta particle, is an electron actually coming from the nucleus? That is a very good question. And what we believe happened is that a neutron splits. into a proton that remains in the nucleus and an electron that is ejected, spit out. Carbon-14 actually undergoes through beta decay. So in carbon-14's unstable nucleus, first thing that happens is one of its eight neutrons splits to create a proton and electron inside the nucleus. The proton stays in the nucleus, but the electron is ejected. 
So you can recognize beta decay because you'll always have an electron as a product. And again, since a neutron split and a proton remained, the atomic number will actually go up by one. And the mass will remain the same because while you lose a neutron, you split a neutron, you generate a proton. And the only thing that's leaving is an electron which has no mass. So the mass will remain constant. So this is an example of beta decay. The mass is the same, but the atomic number actually increases by one because now you have an extra proton due to the splitting of a neutron. So that is beta decay. Gamma radiation is next. Gamma radiation is the release of high energy waves from the nucleus, damaging high energy waves. Whoops. undergo gamma radiation, but if you think of what you're releasing, you're releasing a mass, a substance that has no mass and has no charge. So the mass remains the same and the atomic number remains the same. This is the one form of radiation where there is no transmutation. It, the element that undergoes gamma release does not turn into someone else. Kind of funny, because isn't that what caused the Hulk to turn into the Hulk, was this gamma, it transmutated him? But in reality, it didn't, right? In reality, gamma radiation doesn't cause you to turn into anything else. It's not true, it's just a cartoon. Hate to crush your hopes. And then finally, positron emission is the release of a positron. Now, again, a positron is an E0 plus 1 substance. And again, you may be wondering, oh, by the way, hi, Mrs. Trapasso. You may be wondering uh, how a positron gets emitted from the nucleus, because perhaps you know that only protons and neutrons were found in the nucleus. Hi, Madison. <laughs> All right, we're back here. Uh, we were talking about a positron and how on earth a positron could come from the nucleus if a nucleus only has protons and neutrons in it. Well, just like the whole electron doodad where the, the neutron split, it's kind of similar with a positron. Except instead of a neutron splitting, in positron emission, a proton splits. And when the proton splits, the neutron remains in the nucleus. And the leftover, that's not the neutron, is ejected. And the leftover is called a positron. Okay? So since you're, you're losing a proton in this process, right? The proton is turning into, if you will, a neutron and a positron, the atomic number will go down by one. And the atomic mass will actually stay constant. And the atomic mass stays constant because you're losing a proton but gaining a neutron. So you lose a particle with a mass of one, but gain a particle with a mass of one, so it's a wash. The mass remains the same. Let me just give you an example of positron emission, and um, I'll pick a real one. There's actually a table. Let me take you to that table here. Um, it's table N for nuclear. So if you go here to table N, if you notice, these are radioactive nuclides. And if you look at the decay mode, they'll actually tell you what type of particles they release. So the first positron is, uh, the symbol for positron is B plus right here. And you'll notice that calcium 37 is a positron emitter. 
So I'll write the decay of it for you. And then we'll do some practice with this in class. So calcium 37, who has an atomic number of 20, spits out a positron when its nucleus is unstable. Gurgle, gurgle. A positron has the symbol E0 plus 1, which we also write as B plus, but when you're doing equations, it's better to write this notation. When it does that, since it's lost a particle that doesn't have a mass, the mass will remain the same. However, we also lost a proton. So our atomic number goes down by one, and now we are potassium. So calcium has transmutated or changed into potassium through the release of a positron. That's it for tonight, everybody. Remember to finish up your graphic organizer. I'll be asking for those and checking your notes tomorrow. Have a great night. Bye-bye.